so in terms of uh, the, the origins and the, the reason why we have a sector in humanitarian response called child protection, um, in fact, this, in some ways you could say this is a very new sector, in some ways it's a, it's a relatively old one. Uh, if we look back at um, stories of the First World War and the, the children who migrated across Europe, many of whom became separated from their families and were received in different countries, including in the UK. Um, the, the questions around the safety and well-being and the care arrangements for those children uh, were very, very visible and they really seized the imagination of the public. Um, and that's when organizations like Save the Children, which are very well established now, began. Um, and then we see that throughout, throughout history in the Spanish Civil War, in the, in the Second World War, and of course, you know, further afield um, in the conflicts in, in Korea, and also as um, in the States, as, as the um, development of uh, industry pushed people to move around and, and different economic and social forces uh, impacted on children. Um, uh, we can see that always that the plight of children has really been at the heart of um, charitable endeavors and at the heart of emergency response as, as it's grown up over, over the years. Um, that in, the, in that sense, it's a relatively well established and well-known sector. However, if you compare child protection to other areas of humanitarian response, for example, nutrition or health, or even something like shelter, the provision of temporary housing or tarpaulins or tents or whatever, um, actually those, those areas of humanitarian response are, are in a way much better established. They're much more easily recognized and supported by donors. And um, th they um, can demonstrate results at the moment better than child protection can. So uh, to that extent, they feel more evolved and, and, uh, um, and more established as sectors.